Hey folks, Dr. Sean Baker again. Hey, look, there's been a lot of uh, press recently about the sweetener alternative erythritol in the news, a recent study talking about does it contribute to heart disease? Well, let's do a little bit of an overview on erythritol and the pros, the cons, why you may or may not want to include it in your diet. Uh, first of all, erythritol is a sweetener that belongs to a class known as sugar alcohols. Now, sugar alcohols are usually, usually used as low-carb uh, calorie sweeteners in many low-carb and ketogenic type foods. Erythritol is also naturally found in some fruits, vegetables, and other fermented foods. Interestingly enough, our body also can produce erythritol in certain tissues, including body fluids like the urine, the plasma, field fluid, and even in the eye lens. When it is produced, for using food products and baked goods, erythritol has a similar taste, texture, and baking quality to sugar. Unlike sugar, it is very, very low in its caloric content. Sugar, which is a carbohydrate, is four calories per gram, whereas erythritol is basically 0.24 calories per gram. So it has about a 6% of the calories of sugar and about 70% of the sweetness for sugar. So that's made it a very popular a candidate for low carb recipes. However, erythritol does have its drawbacks. And let's talk about uh, some of the pros and cons. So the first pro we talked about for those following low carb diets, erythritol has very little carbohydrates to deal with. Now, if you're transitioning coming from a standard American diet, uh, to a low carb ketogenic or even a carnivore diet, uh, erythritol may help you uh, transition. So if you're in the habit of consuming four packets of sugar in your coffee any morning, every morning, a glazed donut for breakfast, a honey and peanut butter sandwich for lunch, chocolate lava cake for your dessert for dinner, and going straight to steak and eggs might shock your system a little bit. And so this might help you in the transition phase. So if you need a little erythritol in your coffee to help bridge you over uh, to some healthier habits, this may be a good thing. So let's talk about some of the uh, potential cons of erythritol. So erythritol, like many other sugar alcohols, can lead to uh, bloating and gastric distress. Due to their chemical structures, sugar alcohols usually are difficult to be digested by our small intestine. As a result, any sugar alcohols that move on to your large intestine where the bacteria will, will prevent it will cause a significant amount of gas as a byproduct, which can make you feel bloated and gassy, fatigued, irritable, and so on and so forth. Sugar alcohols, including erythritol, are considered FODMAPs. And so, uh, Erythritol is different than most sugar alcohols in that 90% of it is absorbed in the bloodstream via the small intestine, leaving about 10% of, of what you're, you consume fermented in the colon. So it's not the worst sugar alcohol when it comes to some of these GI side effects, but you're eating significant amounts of it, certainly it can become a problem in that, in that way. Now, it's usually derived from corn products. So erythritol you find in the grocery store is usually meant by, made by fermenting dextrose which is a sugar derived from corn. And corn is a grain and they find themselves sensitive to it. In fact, corn is in so many products now in different forms. Uh, this is in part because we've hybridized corn to have these huge kernels and, and become sugary inside. Our modern corn is unlike the little wimpy, remember corn is a grass, the, the, the wimpy little grasses that our, that our ancestors might have contended with. Now, it's an unfamiliar plant for our body in comparison to what we've been eating for millions of years. We really, really are designed to eat corn, to be honest. Uh, corn also has phytates and lectins and other plant anti nutrients in it. So these antinutrients can cause extreme digestive distress for people, particularly those who are ill or have certain autoimmune conditions. Uh, both of these factors combined make erythritol and corn dextrose and, and the things it's derived from like, likely culprits for gastric distress and bloating. Now it may cause an insulin spike. Remember, tasting something sweet, we have the cephalic phase of digestion. So sometimes sweet taste can trigger our, our uh, hormonal system. So we have increases in insulin, our body thinks we're going to get something sweet, and so it starts to prepare itself accordingly. And so having that happen might be problematic over time. Now, there's no actual nutrition, you know, in erythritol. You know, you're not going to get really much of anything valuable from that other than that sweet taste. And so that is just another issue where, you know, just eating empty calories, albeit very few of them, may be problematic. Now, it is often utilized you know, not the erythritol itself, but it's often combined into just highly processed garbage, you know, keto garbage uh, treats and, and things like that, which are just honestly not good for you. You shouldn't be eating those things in the first place. Remember, a cookie doesn't matter if it's paleo, vegan, or, or keto. It's still a cookie, and it's still a, a problem, particularly if you're eating a large amounts of it. And a lot of people have really do struggle with it. They can't just eat one of those. A lot of people really can't moderate these foods. And so this is another way to continue on with that, you know, somewhat of a bad habit. Now, Here's the big one, may or may not increase the likelihood of cardiovascular uh, events. Now this recent study showed that there was a relationship between the blood alcohol erythritol level of people and their cardiovascular outcomes, okay? Now the problem with that study was that where does the blood 
erythritol level comes from, well, it could come from endogenous production. It may be a marker of a damaged system, just like other markers that are out there. And we see this in a lot of cases. And so just because your erythritol level is elevated, it doesn't mean that eating it got it there. It could mean that it's elevated because you're already sick. And if you're already sick, you're more likely to have things like heart disease. You know, we, we don't know the answer. They didn't really do enough information on that. So it could be. It could be that uh, erythritol in, in large amounts in consumption could actually be contributing to heart disease, but this study doesn't tell us that. So while you may want to consider to say maybe, maybe pausing until there's more information there, it may not be there at all. So we can't say definitively. Okay, so anyway, my overall thoughts on this, again, I think with all artificial sweeteners, you know, everything you consume impacts your microbiome. <laughs> doesn't matter what it is. Is that, is that necessarily a big problem? Some of the cons I've listed are cons definitely for some people, but it's not a con for everybody. You know, if you can tolerate it, uh, if it provides you some level of uh, variety and it doesn't cause symptoms, and that's, and that's probably the key point, if it doesn't cause symptoms, then I think you can probably enjoy that in some level of moderation, assuming you can moderate. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of telling everybody to moderate things because most people have a really hard time with that. But if you are able to and you don't have any health problems and you're in good shape, then you probably have some more flexibility than someone who's not. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment what your thoughts on the video, what do you think about the editing, what do you think about the new style. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.